Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how can you perform some leave and data analysis. And we have some leave data with us. And we're going to take a look at that. How can we clean this data and perform some analysis? Now, this is the same data set. In fact, it's the same case study that we discussed in the webinar a few days back. Me and Abey got together and we did a webinar on this. So we have an employee code here. And against this employee code, all the leaves that this employee takes is mentioned in a single row just in case the employee is taking a range of leaves like let's say for example he's taking leaves on two days 16th and the 17th there is a dash in between and these two dates are captured in case there is a single date and the date is separated by a comma you can take a look that over here there are three days of leave so from 24th um, 25th and then 26th this is separated by a dash so this data is maintained like this and we would not be able to perform any kind of analysis on this data unless we kind of clean the data and have uh, one date per employee in a single row so let's see how can we do that using power query in excel so this is already converted into a table structure and i'm going to go to data and load this data into power query so from table all right immediately the data comes into power query now what i have to do is i have to uh, split the dates column by a comma and have individual rows so i right click here and i go to split column by a delimiter my delimiter is a comma uh, so i'm just going to mention a comma right here and in the advanced options i have the option to split it into rows and that means that when it splits here it is not going to come in the next column It's going to come in the next row against the same employee so let's see how that shows up click on ok and i have it like that uh, the next thing that I have to do is since this is a range of dates, so 16 to 17, there are two days here. So let's just split it into different column this time using a delimiter as a dash. So right click again, split by a delimiter, which is a dash this time. And this time we're going to split it into, into two columns. So uh, we have two columns right here. Now, thankfully, this has already been converted into a date format. You can see that there we have a change type step automatically created. Now, this is good. Uh, what we need to, apart from this, what we need to have is that you can see that uh, this is just two days, so 16th to 17th. But in this case, where we have 24th as the first day of the leave and 26th as the last day of the leave, then we need to have a range of dates. Uh, so we, I need to have three rows actually, one for 24th, then for 25th, and then for 26th. So I need to have data like this. So I'm gonna use a, a, a custom column and uh, try to create a range of dates between the two dates. So let's see how can we do that. I'm gonna go to custom column. So I'm gonna say if the second column is not equal to blank, which is null, then, um, I am going to create a small list which will have the range of the dates. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to write number dot from. There's a function called number dot from. Uh, start the bracket and I'll say take the first date from here. Um, close the bracket, uh, two dots, and then again number dot from, and then again the bracket and end the dates up till here. So number dot from over here and then we close the curly brackets else this is going to be null so what i'm trying to do here is that uh, i'm just trying to check this column if this column is empty then i don't need to create a range but in case i have a date here that means that there has to be a range so how will i form the range i will form the range using number dot from i pick up the first date up till the second range i form a range and the range is obviously going to have all the dates between the first date and the second date let's just take a look at how this appears I'm going to click on OK and I have a list here. Now, if I click on the list here, you can see that I have three dates right here, 79, 80 and 81. This is showing as numbers because for Excel, dates are nothing but numbers. We are going to convert it into dates in a while. Now, let's just expand the list uh, on the double arrow. I click on expand to new rows and I have this and also convert this into a date format. And I have the, the dates here. Now, you can see that 24. 25 and 26 I have all the dates with me now I'd like to make a single column of the dates so I go to add column again and I write uh, maybe this time a conditional column and I'm going to say that uh, if the custom column is blank so let's just call it as dates leave dates whatever you can call it uh, so if the custom column uh, is equal to null uh, then um, I would like to pick up the first column so dates one 
otherwise I'd like to pick up the uh, custom column which is the same column itself and I'll click on OK and I have all the dates with me now uh, all of this is actually rough work I'm just going to keep this column and the employee code with me and remove all the other rough work and I can simply load this data into my Excel so close and load and on the next sheet I would have the data with me now I'm free to kind of you know make make a pivot table I'm just going to convert it into a date format I'm free to make a pivot table out of this and perform any kind of analysis that I would like to do that but we also have the option of performing the analysis right into Power Query itself. And one of the first analysis that I would like to speak about is that how many leaves each of the employee has taken. And that simply means that against the employee code, you count the number of leaves that the employee has taken. Now, although you can create a pivot table using this, but let's just take a look at that. How can you do that using Power Query? So I'm just going to go back to the raw data that we have cleaned and double click right here. And this takes me back to the query. Although I can perform further steps right here, but then this is going to alter my raw data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference this query. So right click and I create a reference. Now in the reference query, you can see that the first source step is the raw data. That means that raw data is being picked up from here. Whatever is the last step here is being picked up and this becomes the first step right here. Now let's just not give this name as a raw data. Let's just give this as number of leaves, number of leaves. All that I need to do is count the number of leaves against each employee. So I will go to the transform tab and I'll click on group. And in the group box, I'm going to say that the first column is obviously going to be by the employee code. And the next column is going to be a calculation. Uh, the calculated column is going to be, let's say number of leaves of leaves. And the operation is going to be count rows and I'm just going to click on OK. And you can see that the first column is employee code. The second column is number of leaves. I go to home. I click on close and load. And another uh, table is being loaded into my Excel, which is every single employee and how many leaves has he taken. The other analysis that you could think of doing with this data is that uh, what has been the trend of uh, employees as in in a particular month, what are the days that they take leaves on? Do they take leaves mostly on the 1st, on the 2nd, on the 15th, on the 30th? What are the days when they take, take leaves on? So let's just see how can we do that kind of analysis. I'm again going to go to raw data once again, open up the query and again make a reference once again because I don't really want to use this query. So right click here, create a reference again and I have again a reference query and let's just call this as a month day because I want to do a month and day analysis, I obviously need to extract the, the day, that means the 16th or the 17th or the 27th, the day uh, number, and I obviously need to extract the, the month name. So I'm gonna click on the date, and in the add column, I am just going to extract the name of the month, and I'm also going to extract the day. So I have the day and I have the month. Now I would not, uh, have the need for the leave dates I can just simply delete that column now I want like a pivot kind of a structure where I'd like to have the month name on the top that means January February March April something like that and I'd like to have the days right here and in between the number of leaves taken on the month and the day so how do I do that I click on the month and I create a pivot table like structure inside power query in the transform I click on pivot column it says that use the names in the column month name to create new columns and values in the employee code. That's perfectly fine. And this is going to be the count. And let's see how, how what gets created. You can see that uh, the first column is the day column. That means the day of the month in the month of February, April, May, June, July, August, and something like that. Now, obviously, this is not uh, arranged properly. So I'm just going to reorder the column. So January comes first, February comes second, and then we have March. We have April, May, June, and July. This is absolutely fine. If you want, you can also maybe take a total of all these months. So just hold the control key, keep selecting all these months. And I'm going to add an additional column um, in the standard. I'm just going to say add, and I have the total. And let's just rename this to uh, not addition, but let's say total leaves or something like that. So uh, right here, I'm just going to say that the new column that is inserted is total leaves. And I can simply again load this data inside my Excel and this gets created. So on this day, you can see that where are the maximum leaves taken. Highlight that 
uh, use conditional formatting and maybe use color scales here uh, the opposite actually you can see that uh, maximum leaves are taken on the 19th of june right a lot of leaves were taken in these three months all right the last analysis that i'd like to perform is that uh, how many leaves are people taking on a particular day of the month so are they t taking leaves mostly on mondays tuesdays wednesdays when are they taking leaves so for that i'm just going to create another query again just go back to raw data real quick create a, a reference so reference gets created and i'd like to call this as day of the month all right because i need to have day of the month i need to extract three things i need to extract the day number and also the name of the day monday tuesday wednesday and obviously the month name so selecting the leave dates add column in the data in the date drop down i'm just going to say that please extract the name of the month that's one extract the name of the day that's number two and extract the day of the week so that's another thing now once i get all these three things obviously i don't need the leave dates i can simply choose to delete that now just like we created before i'd like to have a pivot table kind of structure where the month name is going to be like jan feb march written here in columns and in rows i'd like to have monday tuesday wednesday and the count of the leaves right here so i select the month name in the transform tab i create a pivot and I say that make the columns with the name of the month and in the values you have the employee code in the advanced option count it. And I have something like this created. Now you can see that uh, this is not sorted. I'd like to have Monday first and Sunday in the end. So right click here and uh, sorry, I'm just gonna click here and then I'm just gonna sort this ascending. Uh, Monday comes first, Sunday comes in the end. That is the reason why we create a day of the week and now it's not needed. I can just simply choose to remove that. Also, you would see that uh, the months are not in the order. So January comes first, like the way that we did it before, February, and then we have March. We have April, May, June, and July. That's about it. And I simply load this data into my Excel. And I have day of the month created, although I could have taken totals here on the right, but that's okay as of now. Why don't we select all of this, go to the Home tab, click on conditional formatting and let's just try to see that when do people take the leaves the most so you can see that june was the month where people took a lot of leaves and friday was definitely one of the days when people took a lot of leaves all right that's about it that's how you kind of do analysis inside power query you have the option of doing that as well in case you have any questions regarding this please feel free to put them down in the comments and i'll be more than happy to help you out thank you so much for watching this and do take care of yourselves Bye bye